Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today's episode, we're going to look at two SB22 switchboards stacked and how to operate them. Here we go. This is basically what the SB22s look like when you have them stacked. Um, they lock together the latches. In one case, actually fasten on to the next case, they'll hold in place. I'm having a little bit of an issue with that because I'm missing the latches on the top case, so I actually have a uh, some nuts put in place that the uh, cable can grab onto and I can tighten up to keep it tilted. Also, uh, this is a little bit more of an extreme angle that you'd really use. I have a stand that I put my SP22 on when I take it to shows. It's a little bit easier to see when you're people looking at it than, than laying flat. But this is basically what it looks like. Basically, uh, this will allow you to extend the number of uh, phones you had. Um, that's which I purchased this had actually had 17 line packs. And you can see a line pack takes up five line packs take up the space that the operator pack goes into. And this is how it works. I mean if you wanted to, the, the manual tells you to remove the line pack from one of the stacked units and put in more uh, remove the operator pack, put in more line packs to give you more more lines. But if you wanted to, you could actually just leave the line pack in. It doesn't matter. It depends on how many lines you want to have. With this setup right here, I've got uh, 29 phone lines. So my goal is to, I have a Soviet switchboard too. I'd like to get rid of the Soviet switchboard because it's difficult to operate. It cranks really hard and it's in a bad place to you know, put on a display table. And go with this and just hook everything up to one. So that, that's the goal. We're going to go ahead and shut down. We're going to go ahead and flip these over and show you the back because that's where the main difference is in when you do stuff. With the stuff you have to do to make it work. Okay, I got them flipped over. We're going to look at the back of them. There's some major differences in how you do this. So we'll open up. This is the uh, primer switch. You can see it's got the line pack in. It's got these wires still connected to the night alarm and such. One of the major things you have to do, though, is you have to find this a piece of wire and plug it into the night alarm button on here. It's not identified on here, but it's got a little marker by it. And the ground. That's what this wire I installed right here is this... Uh, brings the ground lug out and brings the nine alarm lug out. And what it does is how the uh, trunk cards or line packs work is when you, they receive a ring, they have a little, when that eye pops up, it also trips the little switch inside there that causes a connection and, or shorts between ground and the nine alarm so it set the uh, nine alarm and the operator pack off. But since we're not going to have a battery or a, a operator pack in the stack unit, we have to do this to get the signal that a, uh, a call has been received to the night alarm into this unit, and that's this wire right here. But you can see this is basically how it looks right here. We've got our battery pack in it. We've got our wires for microphone and for the night alarms connected right there. I also, the black wire, you can't see it, it's connected to the grounding lug. And the yellow wire is actually plugged into the uh, binding post for night alarm. Go ahead and shut this one up, open this one up now. Now this is the one that's going to be stacked. So there's some real noticeable differences. First of all, there's no battery pack. This showed up without a battery pack or any mounting stuff, so I just left it out. And also the thing to remember is these old uh, identifiers right here. Uh, battery, night alarm, battery mic, those are now 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Terminal. So you'll just wire right on here like you normally would to make it uh, make a connection with a piece of field wire. And then also on this one, I've got uh, the black wire connected to the ground lug and the yellow wire connected to the uh, night alarm binding post. This way, when the phone, a line pack is wrong, it'll trip the night alarm relay inside the, the line pack, which in turn will short this together and you'll get an actual ring in the air. You'll we'll get a ring, you'll get a, an alarm for night alarm. So basically you'll see the uh, the eye drop, turn to white, then you'll hear or see the uh, the night alarm light or buzzer. Uh, another thing remember I discovered on this, if you happen to have a line pack that uh, when, when you plug the line pack in, it immediately sets the night alarm off, even though it's cleared, there's actually little relays inside there and stuff that can get stuck so it won't when you stick the cord in to clear it it won't clear so it's just a heads up it's not the line the line pack will still work and pass uh, 
audio back and forth on a phone call and it'll still show a ring. It's just that the night alarm is stuck, so it'll already set it off. It's just a heads up. So next I'm going to go ahead and shut down. We'll go ahead and stack them up and we'll do a demo. Okay, we got them stacked back together on the trusty uh, stand. I have my uh, wires hooked together, so basically the night alarms are connected. The night alarm circuit is connected between both of them. And I have my uh, faithful 312 hooked up to line pack number one here. And we'll do a quick demo to show how it works. So we'll go ahead and we'll ring. Ah, you can hear the uh, night alarm buzzer came on. You can see that the eye dropped right here. Um, I don't have a handset hooked up, but you go ahead and take the operator plug from the bottom, switch where the handset is with the line or the operator pack, and plug it in. Do whatever you got to do. Um, let's say he wanted to talk to somebody down here. Uh, there we go. And plug him in to right there. Do your ringing action, and away you go. He's patched together. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, why would you want to do this? Well, if you wanted to. You know, have more phone lines. I'm going to do it for my demos. And like I said, if you really want to, if you have, if you have your buddy comes over to SB22, you don't have to take the line pack out. The only reason to do that is so they can add five additional cards inside here. This will still work with my trunk card. I don't have my dialer running over. My trunk card's right here. My dialer will still fit over all this stuff right here. So if you wanted to go ahead and make a trunk call and a dial call and patch it to one of these phones, you could go ahead and do that. If you want to patch radio circuits, you can do the same thing here. So that's pretty much how it sets up and operates, and that's uh, SB22 switchboard stacked. Thanks for watching.